Angels are saying to you there is a change about to happen. Get ready for it. You have been through enough and a breakthrough is on its way. Surrender to the process and timing by letting the worry go. Limits, fear, and shame cannot occupy the same space as prosperity, hope, and worth. Believe in the abundant goodness that is destined for you. Be grateful today, not just for what you have, but for what you have never gone through. Sometimes we get distracted by what we lack and never consider what we were saved from. Stay thankful, focus it, and keep confidently pushing forward. You are more blessed than you can currently imagine. You are worthy of all good things. Evolve so you can better pursue the highest vision for your life. Release the limiting beliefs that are blocking your blessings. You cannot mess up what is meant to be. Remember, you never have to fight to keep what's yours, because it will always find a way to come to you. Trust that it is all working out for your highest good. I know things have been difficult for you. You've been worrying so much that you haven't been able to sleep at night. Give your burdens to me, and I will give you rest. Wait on me and let me renew your strength. You are on the verge of your breakthrough. You're going to make it. Just wait until you see why the universe had you wait. What the universe is doing beyond what you could even pray for or think of. Something major is about to happen for you. The big dream you're always thinking about becomes reality. Finally, it's your time to become very rich and successful. Double tap. To claim it now, the universe is working for you. Heaven is holding a conversation about you. Angels have been assigned to you. It's gonna be all right. Get ready for more fun, improved finance, healing, lots of love, and miracles. Type yes if you believe. One of the most amazing transformations in the Bible happened when Saul, former persecutor of Christians, encountered God on the road to Damascus. See Acts 9. After his encounter, he was so radically changed from the inside out that even his name was changed to Paul. He began preaching the gospel and eventually went on to write much of the New Testament. When you have a supernatural encounter with Almighty God, something is going to happen. Something is going to be transformed inside of you and radiate out into every part of your being, affecting every part of your life. Today, I want to encourage you to prepare your heart to expect God's supernatural touch in your life. Open the eyes of your heart to Him. I pray that you experience God in such a way that every bondage is broken off of your life and you are forever changed by a supernatural encounter with Him. Father, right now I invite you to transform me into your image. Search my heart and mind and remove anything that is displeasing to you. Show me your glory. Reveal yourself to me as I keep my heart and mind focused on you in Jesus' name. Amen. I like to say, where the mind goes, the man follows. In other words, positive thoughts are precursors to a positive life. On the other hand, anxious thoughts and negative expectations set us up for miserable lives. Many people think they cannot control their thoughts, but they can. Like anything else, it takes practice. What you think is up to you. You can choose your own thoughts and should do so carefully, since thoughts have a lot of creative power in your life. If you don't reject bad thoughts, you will ultimately turn those thoughts into bad words and actions that are not pleasing to God. When our lives don't go well, we tend to blame our problems. But most of the time it's not the problems causing the trouble, it's the way we think about the problems. One person, when faced with difficulty, might think, this is terrible. I will never get through this, my life is ruined. Another person, faced with exactly the same hardship, might choose to think, this is a challenge, but God promises to fight for me, and he will win this battle. 
Which of the two people do you think would come through the difficulty in better shape? Learning how to think correctly is mandatory for every aspect of health. I urge you to make a priority of learning to think upbeat, healthy thoughts that agree with God's word. Don't let negative thoughts lead you into an unhappy life. Choose positive thoughts that will strengthen and encourage you and lead to a life of joy, peace, and victory. For I did not speak of my own accord, but the Father who sent me commanded me what to say and how to say it. I know that his command leads to eternal life. So whatever I say is just what the Father has told me to say. John 12, 49, 50. On earth I was not merely a teacher passing along information. I didn't say what I said so people could simply consider my words, but so they could do them. The truth is, my Father sent me to earth to accomplish everything he wanted me to accomplish. I did everything he commanded me to do and said everything he commanded me to say. That's why my words are so critical to your daily life and to your eternal life as well. They are not my words only. They are the words of your Almighty Father. They will perform their miraculous power in you if you will abide in them. My words will never fail. But if you don't know them, you rob yourself of knowing the ultimate truth, the solutions to your problems, and the source of your faith. By not doing them, you deprive yourself of the powerful miracles they would work in your life. Child, hear my words and do them. People believe in me. They live and walk in darkness. They do not know the Father or me or the Father's truth, so they occur. Uh, the world's deceptive values. Satan is the father of lees and the master of deception. In the darkness he makes everything he offers seem acceptable and good and everything the Father offers seem unimportant and without value. Those who remain in darkness will end their lives in despair. But child, you believe in me. You are the Father's dear child, and he does not want you to remain in darkness. My words are light, and as long as your heart remains in them, you need not fear being drawn into darkness. When your behavior steps out of my light into darkness, realize that you have forsaken my words. But you don't have to remain there. Get back to my words, hear them and obey them. There is no other way to escape the darkness and no other way to remain in the light. Remain in my words to love me, to grow your faith, to become my true disciple, to know the truth and to remain free. If you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. John 8, 31, 32. S is the father of lies. This world is his kingdom. Those who don't know me have grown up in a dishonest world, where PPL define truth and lies like shades of color. If something is mostly true, they view it as true. If there is a slight exaggeration or a few necessary details are omitted, they act as if they have been honest. But God has no part in Satan's dark world. He is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. You are a child of God. I have called you to walk in the light as he is in the light. Avoid dishonesty in your ways and your words. Your interactions with everyone must be above reproach. When you enter into a commitment, there are to be no lies, no exaggerations, no necessary details hidden or omitted. Whatever you say you will do, you are fully committed to perform. No partial, no reservations. To children of the light, there is no degree of truth, no degree of falsehood. The truth is fully true. The smallest lie is not small. It's a lie. Child, I am the truth. If you want the eternal blessings of following me, then follow me. Walk while you have the light before darkness overtakes you. The man who walks in the dark does not know where he is going. John 12, 35. My disciples witnessed every miracle I performed. 
They saw in me calm a stormy sea, heal the sick, give sight to the blind, and even raise the dead. And yet they still found it hard to take con of their troubled hearts and trust me and my father. Their unbelief didn't stop me from loving them, but it kept them from experiencing the joy, peace, and power of my presence. The same is true with you. Whenever you find yourself stressed or worrying real, that you are choosing to withhold your heart from me, you are choosing not to trust me or your Heavenly Father, who loves you so. You are not hearing my words or obeying them. If you will begin to spend more time listening to my words and thinking about them throughout your day, your faith will grow and even soar. And as you obey my teachings, you will experience a new level of intimacy with me and with my Father. Your love, faith, and power will grow be yet anything you have ever imagined. I promise don't be afraid. Just believe. Mark 5.36 for nearly 40 years, a man had been very sick. When I asked if he wanted to be made well, he didn't say yes. Instead, he told me of his seemingly hopeless circumstances. He secretly hoped that I would solve his problem by changing the circumstances by carrying him to a place where he believed he could be healed. The man didn't know that my father had granted me all of his power and authority. The man didn't need to be delivered from his circumstances. He needed a word from me. He only needed to say, Yes, Lord, and then hear my words and obey them. Child, how often do you ask me to solve your problem your way or to deliver you from the problem altogether? That is not faith. Don't ask me for help and then specify how the help should be given. Just say, Yes, Lord. I want to be well. Then listen to my words and obey them. Then I will make you well my way. The infirmities of your soul are much more serious than the infirmities of your body. If I make you well in your soul, your circumstances and infirmities will no longer restrain your soul. You don't need a change of circumstances. You need a change of heart. Hear me and obey me, and I will make you well. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, and trust also in me. John 14, 1. A young man who was possessed by demonic spirits approached Amy. He lived in a graveyard and was tormented day and night by his captors. When I cast the spirits out of him, his life was transformed. He pleaded to go with me. But I told him to go home and tell his people all that the Lord had done for him. He didn't complain or argue, but did exactly what I told him to do. Even though he couldn't travel with me, he was as much my follower as those who did. He followed me in the most important way, by obeying my words. Child, my father has a plan for you as well. It may not be exactly what you want, but it is eternal, and it is perfect. You can be my true follower if you will believe my words and obey them. Your first mission field includes your family and friends. Let them hear your testimony of God's amazing love for you. Let them see me in the life you lead. Let them experience my love, patience, and kindness through you. Let them hear my words through your voice and see my words actively transforming your life. I tell you, whoever acknowledges me before men, the Son of Man will also acknowledge him before the angels of God. Luke 12, 8. Nothing makes more visible how much he hates sin than what he has done to destroy it. Is it not too much to say that he wanted to descend from heaven and die himself to wipe it out? The Son of God has hated sin as far as to want to die in order to destroy it. I speak of the faults that Christians who live in half-heartedness are accustomed to commit deliberately and of which they make for themselves habits that they hardly bother to correct. 
Such are the minor angers, the minor swipes, the words of contempt, the slight gossip, the mockery, the lies, the irreverence and the voluntary distractions in prayer, the desire to please people, the humorous talk that can produce nasty thoughts, the curious looks, too great a love of neatness in dress, laziness, the minor overindulgence in drinking and in eating, the negligence in things that pertain to duty, as in the instruction of servants and in the education of children. In a word, all sins of whatever kind they may be, when the issue is slight or there is more lack of consideration than malice. I say that these faults, above all when they are actual, when one often falls back into them, when one neglects to mend one's ways from them, when one counts them for nothing. I'll say that these are the greatest evils. Of many reasons that present themselves in order to prove this, I choose not but one soul of them, which will be the whole subject of our discussion. The little sins are great evils because they are great dispositions to the greatest sins. They are all mortal in this sense that they lead to the death of the soul, that they dispose to mortal sin. They dispose to it, both from the side of God whose graces they deplete, and from the side of the individual whose forces they exhaust. Total trust in God is the only true foundation for you. We can't afford to live at peace while we inwardly believe all depends on us, and that we hold God's love on the fragile basis of our virtue. But when we trust His never-failing concern for us, His steady, unfaltering love and determination to give Himself, no matter how weak we are, then we can rest contentedly on His broad fatherly shoulders, and our proof of our trust in Him must be a resolution to trust our sisters not the way we trust Him, because all human beings are so limited, but a trust in their essential goodness that they want Him as much, perhaps more than we do, and that we all meet peacefully in that longing. I am sure His loving heart is pleased with your efforts, and He doesn't even notice your inevitable failures. He just says gently, Love me all the more for the falls, and I will do my will for you. Trust means that we, at least, expect fairness. And God could never make demands that we couldn't meet, could he? All worries about backsliding are just self. He always asks us to live in peace, in largeness. If we fall, we simply look at him and go on. We never fret or feel strained. Better for him that we give less in peace than more in strain, because he is only present in the peaceful heart. Be brave, never give in to these lowering fears. And remember that trust is a virtue that has to be struggled and prayed for. The reason why he lets you feel as you do is precisely so you can struggle and receive in his sweet time. But always we persevere, and must persevere, with the same desire for obedience with which we began on that first day. With that same holy fear we must exercise our spirit in continual humble prayer right up to the last day of our life, so that our spirit will never become lazy. We should always be occupied with praying the Psalms or meditating or raising our mind to God, pondering within ourselves the blazing charity we discover and see in the blood of the Word, God's Son. For he has made a bath of his blood to wash away our sins. When we see and consider that God loves us so much, we cannot keep ourselves from loving. And when we love, our mind thinks about the object of our love. Now we cannot live without love. And since two opposing loves cannot exist together, we must of necessity be stripped of perverse love and clothed in God's. Because our heart cannot but be sensitive to the one we love, we use holy thoughts to drive out the evil thoughts the devil would like to put into our heart. And the devil, finding that our heart is ablaze in the fire of divine charity, doesn't come around much any more than a fly comes around a boiling cauldron. 
but if the devil were to find our heart fearful and lukewarm, he would come in right away with all his ugly thoughts and imaginings. So we must keep active so that we will be found not lukewarm or empty, but filled with God in holy desire, remembering and meditating on the wonderful blessings we have received from him. Trust that the future can still be beautiful even if it looks different than what you were expecting. Trust that even here, more is unfolding beyond what you have been able to see. Even when things have changed, you may not be able to be everything to everyone, but you can still be everything you were meant to be by choosing to be present and ready to grow at every place on the journey. You do not miss out on what is meant for you when someone says no to you. You have not missed out on being able to know love and peace just because all that fell apart this year. You are still here, and this matters more than you know. You are going to have more opportunities to live, to learn, to grow. Years from now, you won't remember every conversation, every thought, or everything you accomplished. But I hope you remember the times you bravely chose to love. I hope you remember that when times were hard, you found courage to not give up. I hope you don't just remember the people who left, but the ones who stuck around. I hope you remember that even after the longest nights morning light found you, somehow. I hope you always remember that all along, through everything that was changing, you were changing too. So if you have to say goodbye to something or someone, I hope you can trust that in time you will be fine. Not perfect, but fine. And years down the line, life will be different, but still beautiful. You will still be whole. Even if you're living somewhere different, working something different. In a community or in a relationship you never could have even imagined could be possible. You have come so far. You have learned to let go of what was not right for you. You have learned to step out of the boundaries of your worries, believing that in time it all would be woven together beautifully. It has not been an easy road, but it has opened your eyes to all of the possibilities of what this life could be, even in your uncertainty. So continue to give your all. In all things great and small, continue to see that even in your thankless, unnoticed work, you are still sowing seeds. You are still making mindful and intentional steps towards where you were meant to be. You are still living a life filled with meaning. There might be days where you feel that your work is in vain, and there might be moments where you do not know what to do with all of the sudden change, but you are wrapped in endless, boundless grace all the same giving you strength every day to breathe deep and keep going anyway. Build a life that makes you smile in the simplest moments. Even if that kind of life doesn't look splashy on Instagram, make choices that make you feel lighter even if those choices don't reflect what Sassidy has told you that you shouldn't do. Be free in people you respect, who inspire you, even if it means starting over. Interpret your life through the lens of positivity and optimism, even in a world that feels harsh. Orient yourself in the direction of joy every single day. Focus on what's working in your life. Give more space to it's all working out for me to be true for you. Hope is not dangerous. It's essential. Be your own support system. Make your mind into a beautiful garden where you can choose the most beautiful thought at any given time. No one deserves a life they love more than you, but you do need to create it, build it, curate it. You do need to trust yourself. You do need to let go of how you think it should be and find out who you are, what your opinion is, what matters most to you. Know yourself, choose yourself, Love yourself. Let your life bloom. I want you to be different than yourself now, but not the same as everyone else you see. Tell yourself to be better, but not because you want to be better than someone else. Mold into your own shape, but not in the same mold everyone else uses to grow. Aim in the direction that your path follows, but not what your friends follow. 
Allow yourself to have setbacks, but do not be scared of what set you back in the first place. See the same goal that I have today, but not in the same spot that I am looking at it from now. I want to recognize you, but not feel as if I am looking in a mirror once again. I know you will be humble, but not crumble under the pressure that your past self has put on you. You will thrive at your own pace as a winner of your own race, but not win to gain glory or fame. I will see you, but not physically, or in the present time. In that time you will exceed what I have dreamed for years, but do not forget me because I am where you started, and the voice of encouragement in your ears. Everyone has flaws, because no human will ever be perfect. And at the end of the day, the only one that can improve you is you. You make the change. You take the risks. When it comes down to it, no one else can do those things for you. The hard part about improving yourself is that it takes time. Most valuable things take time. Think about it like this. When you plant a seed, it takes time to sprout, so you give it the proper supplies in order for it to sprout at some point, like water and sunlight. But at the end of the day, you know at some point the plant will sprout. Same thing with real life. We start by planting a seed, or starting the change, and then we give ourselves the things we need to help us grow, like patience, perspective, perseverance, etc. And as time passes, we continue to grow roots, or a foundation for our growth. And in the end, we eventually sprout. Change doesn't happen overnight. It's never going to be easy. One of the hardest things in life is pointing out your own flaws to yourself and trying to improve them. You will struggle to fix it. You have to expect yourself to fall a couple times before you eventually succeed. Being human is not being perfect which is always something to keep in mind. But do the best you can to be the best you can, and do it for yourself. There will be people in the world that just don't like things about you, but that's reality. Do it because you want to. Don't do it for them. Judgment from other people specifically can't be put into words on how to handle. There's no rhyme or reason on how you're supposed to feel because in all honesty, it's really hard to take it lightly, and if you can, that's a very valuable characteristic. One of the only things I could say is, why does it matter? Does the opinion of the people around you really matter when it comes down to it? You are made the way you were made for a reason. And some things you just simply can't change. So does it really matter what they think? The only opinion about you that matters is your own opinion of yourself. You decide how you feel. You decide your flaws and your strengths. You decide that you're everything that you need to be. The truth is, it does hurt no matter who you are, if you really consider what other people say. It's painful sometimes. But it shouldn't affect you. It doesn't mean anything. Or at least it shouldn't. So don't let it pull you down. You are more than what some people think of you or what they say about you. Find the people that really appreciate the best parts about you. It all boils down to us not being perfect. There's always something about everyone to judge. But what's the point when we already know that everyone has flaws? So what you really have to do is move on. Accept it. There's nothing you can do about what other people think of you or what they say about you. You can only control what you think and what you say. So at the end, the day, why should you care? David was going through a tough time when he made the declaration in today's verse. Things weren't going his way. But he said in effect, I'm not worried. I'm not upset. I am confident I will see God's goodness. In other words, this situation I'm in may be rough, but that's not going to steal my vision. That's not going to cause me to give up on my dreams. I am confident that this year, I will see God's favor in a new way. That's what our attitude needs to be today, because what you focus on is what you will see. No matter what the medical report says, 
No matter what your finances look like, no matter how bad that relationship may seem, be confident that you will see his goodness. He is the all-powerful, omniscient creator of the universe, and he holds you in the palm of his hand. Nothing is too difficult for him. Take hold of this truth by faith and focus on his goodness today. Allow his peace to settle in your heart and mind as you move forward in his blessing all the days of your life. A prayer for today. Father in heaven, thank you for your goodness in my life. I choose to focus on you today, no matter what my circumstances may look like. Give me your peace as I keep my mind stayed on you in Jesus' name. Amen. Subscribe our YouTube channel to reach 2,000 divine subscribers soon. Please share this video to 100 people, only if you love God Jesus. Type Amen to affirm. Thanks for watching.